Welcome back to Everybody's Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Everybody's Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Inspector Gadget. Inspector Gadget is a 1999 theatrical release directed by David Kellogg, cinematography by Adam Greenberg, editing by Alan Cody, Tom Noble, and Gerald B. Greenberg, music by John Debney, and it's written by Carrie Aaron and Zach Penn. David Kellogg is best known for Cool as Ice, Playboy Farmer's Daughter, American Express Virtual Reality, and this. Adam Greenberg is best known for Terminator 1 and 2, Ghost, and Sphere. Alan Cody and John Debney I covered in previous videos. So if you listen, link to the description. Tom Noble or Tom Noble is best known for Witness, Thelma and Louise, The Mask of Zorro, and Reign of Fire. Gerald B. Greenberg is best known for The French Connection, Apocalypse Now, American History X, and Kramer vs. Kramer. Carrie Aaron is best known for The Bates Motel, Friday Night Lights, The Morning Show, and this. Zach Penn is best known for Ready Player One, The Avengers, The Incredible Hulk, and X-Men 2 X-Men United, or X2 X-Men United. The film is based off the 1983 animated series called Inspector Gadget. The film stars Matthew Broderick, Joel Lee Fisher, Michelle Trachtenberg, Rupert Everett, and D.L. Hewley. Matthew Roderick plays Inspector Gadget, or John. And I covered him in the video about The Lion King. The link will be in the description. Jolie Fisher plays Brenda and is best known for Search Engines, The Mask, Ellen, and this. Michelle Trachtenberg plays Penny and is best known for Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Seventeen Again, Ice Princess, and this. Rupert Everett plays Sanford Skolex and is best known for My Best Friend's Wedding, The Happy Prince, An Ideal Husband, and Cemetery Man. D.L. Hewley plays the Gadgetmobile and is best known for The Brothers, Scary Movie 3, The Hewleys, and this. Many people were considered for the role, including Robin Williams and Jim Carrey. Naturally, I feel like that makes a lot of sense. And the car is a 19 1964 Lincoln convertible made it took 90 million dollars to make and it made 134.4 million dollars in the box office it has like a 21 percent around tomatoes and got one and a half stars from Roger Ebert which is not very good it's got a direct-to-video sequel released in 2003 there was a reboot possibility announced in 2015 going to Disney plus I watched this movie a lot as a kid and I haven't seen it since I was a kid so it did bring up a lot of memories it was not the same as Pooh's Grand Adventure like Pooh's Grand Adventure was like heartwarming and still held up. This movie is very much obviously made for kids. I mean, there's a Skittle dis Skittles dispenser in the Gadgetmobile, which is sick. I would love a Skittles dispenser, but not anymore because they changed the green from lime to green apple, and that was a crime, and I've never been able to eat Skittles since. But I digress. I'm a little butthurt about Skittles. We could have never known. What a simpler time the Gadgetmobile was. But... The film has some genuinely funny moments, but it also has so much like slapsticky, like kid humor. But it wasn't bad. It's horribly structured. I am so angry at how the plot of this movie plays out, but it's not like so horribly funny that it's like not funny, you know? There are some genuinely funny moments. I like any time. The movie is self-aware and mentions Disney, so the Gadgetmobile saying it's a Disney movie, and then at the end saying, like, I'm having a baby with the Volkswagen, we're gonna name it the Love Bug, but that's not because we're a Disney company movie, and then, um, you know, stuff like that. And then there's even, like, a, like I, there's a joke, a pun, that John, Inspector Gadget, makes. He says quit while you're ahead and he's holding robo gadget as just his head so he quit while you're a head um and it wouldn't have been funny but he broke the fourth wall and did like a <laughs> sorry face which made it so funny so like stuff like that was hilarious but then there was like a lot of like slapstick humor that wasn't that funny like his pants being pulled down and stuff like that like haha that's great but for kids like i remember loving this movie so it worked for them. Also as a child, I remember Penny being in this a lot more, and Penny is barely in this movie, and that has made me the most mad. I feel like they missed an opportunity with that. Penny and John's relationship is so interesting to me. I want to know why does she living with her uncle? Why does he have full custody? Did the parents leave? Did the parents die? What happened there? 
I wanted way more of their relationship. I thought the relationship was very sweet and interesting and I would have loved to see her being much more involved in him becoming Inspector Gadget and her helping him and less of Brenda. Like I get Brenda has to be there to help him because she created him, but I just feel like we needed way more Penny and John together. Like they were, Penny was literally barely in it. There was a, from the time she visited him in the hospital to all the way until he's pretty much like kind of understands that he's Inspector Gadget, we never see her. And I'm like, you, like Penny didn't want to help him with his like newfound abilities at all. Are you kidding me? She's like a 12 year old girl and she doesn't want to help him. Like I was genuinely upset about how little Penny was in this movie. And then she's only around for like little things and little moments. And I missed her. I wanted more of Penny. I could, I couldn't care less about Skolex and that whole villain story. Like, yeah, great. There's a villain storyline. Haha, ha, move, haha. Ha. Whatever, but I just wanted more of Penny and I'm mad we didn't have it. Robo Gadget always made me laugh. I think Matthew Broderick does a good job with Robo Gadget. Um, I don't know why, but when Robo Gadget burns the Riverton sign, it makes me laugh so much because it's just so over the top and abrupt that I think I've laughed at that every time since I was a child. Um, but that's that's it. I, my biggest complaint is Penny's not in the film and it's a bad structured movie. I don't know if I said there was a parent death, but Brenda's father dies on screen. Penny's parents are never mentioned. Zip, not a nilch. So there's one parent death. Mm, the movie's not that great. It's got some funny moments. I think kids would really enjoy this. So my final rating is four gadgets out of 10. Our total movie count is. Our parent death toll is. <laughs> Car count is still the same. If you want to keep up with movie watching, when follow me on Instagram, sure you'll find out what we watching. When I put up videos every Monday and Friday, and sometimes Wednesday, join Patreon, buy merch. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, and on if you are, so you do, and don't be Skolex about it. I could have sworn his name was Dr. Claw. Like I remembered him as Dr. Claw, and then his name is Skolex, and he like kind of goes by Claw. Not where did I get the doctor? I. Maybe that's another thing? I don't know.